Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at the Eero application that I just installed. I installed an Eero system in my house uh, to test it out just to see how it works. And uh, I also wanted to test to see if it had enough of the configuration things that I needed uh, in order to uh, do things like run OS X server or Mac OS server and all of that. So uh, today what I'm going to do is kind of run you through the app and some of the things that you can do with Eero. And we'll test it and see if this will work. I haven't tested it myself yet, so we're going to be doing this live together. Uh, so here we are on the main screen. You can see it tells me that my network is online. Uh, it's got a built-in speed test that you can rerun just by swiping down on the application. You can see what I'm getting there coming down and going up, which is, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, below that, I've got the number of devices currently on my network. You can see I've got 11 there. And then down below, I've got uh, a representation of the three Eros that I have in my household. Now let's just tap on a few things here. The number of devices, if I just tap on that, you'll see that it brings up a screen that shows me all of the different uh, devices that are currently uh, connected to my network. And you can kind of get an idea for all of those. If I tap into one of them, you'll see that I have the option to give it a nickname. And so I'm just going to say, uh, let's put this, let's make this say Apple TV. And what I'm going to say is uh, Family Room. so that I can designate where that's at. And so that'll, that'll give me that information. You can see it's got an IP address and all that kind of information on there as well. Now, if I just tap on Save, now it has saved that. And you see now it's changed the name to Apple TV Family Room, if I just pop back in here. Uh, another thing that you have the option to do is to assign profiles. And I'm going to talk about profiles in a minute. But you can set up family profiles where you can assign certain devices to profiles so that you can then do things like uh, set up access when the internet can be used, when you uh, maybe drop people off if you want to do that so that they come back in. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the profiles yet because I'll show you as soon as I set up a family profile in another area. So let me just tap back here. So I can go through then and rename all of these different devices to whatever I want to name them as. So let me just pop out of there for a minute. Now the other thing I can do, if I tap on one of my Eros down here, I can see uh, the status of the Eero, uh, where it's located, which I can then, of course, change any time just by tapping this area here. Let me just tap back. I've also got uh, the IP address of it, and it's got the OS version. And it tells me that there's an update available. So I can go into Network uh, Settings and do the update, or it'll happen automatically at night. Uh, one of the nice things about the Eero is that it does do automatic updates for you, and, um, and they're usually optimized and all that kind of stuff. Now if I tap here on Details, I can get some more details about this particular Eero in terms of the Ethernet port, uh, the Wi-Fi numbers, the model number, the serial number, all that kind of stuff about the Eero unit itself. Let's tap back. So that gives me that information. And I can also remove an Eero if I want to if I want to take it off of my network. So I'm just going to close this. Now, of course, I can add another Eero down there just by tapping the Add Eero button down below. Now, on the left there, we've got a menu. I'm just going to have this menu pop up here. I was just looking at my network. I also have the option to set up a guest network. Nice thing is I can just throw the switch to enable the guest network and then tap Share the Network. And what it'll do is share uh, a, a little profile that your guests can just tap on, and it will automatically configure them with all the information they need to log on to that network. And so it makes it really nice. And then I can also share my main network down here as well. If I just tap on Share my main network, you see that it gives me the option to send this to myself if I want with the uh, login information. I was going to say cancel. So that's nice that it does that really simply. So you're not having to remember to tell people what the, what the password is and what the SSID is and all that type of thing. Uh, you can see there we do have family profiles. And so in a family profile, I can create a profile where I can pause the internet on certain devices and those sort of things. So if I just tap on Add Profile, I can give this a profile name. Let's say Kids. Let's say Next. And then I can assign devices to the kids' area. So, for instance, I'm going to take my kids' phones here and assign those. And I can put all those on there, probably the uh, Xbox as well, because most likely they'll be playing that, and maybe we'll want to restrict access to it. And then if I just tap on Save, now what's happened is I've saved a profile called Kids. And so I can set a scheduled pause, where I can add a schedule for when uh, the Internet will be on or off or not. If I just say Add Schedule, you see I can... I can set bedtime, and I can set the timings there and save that. I'm just going to go back, back to here. I can see the devices assigned to this profile. If I tap on them, I can remove them from the profile if I'd like to. 
So it gives me the option to do that. And then I can just delete the profile if I want. Now, if I hit that pause button right there, it's going to pause the internet access for all of those devices. And so they'll no longer have internet access once I hit pause. So I just tap this arrow back. So I can create as many of these profiles I want now just by clicking the, uh, just tapping on the plus button on the upper right. So let's go back to the menu here. And let's go into network settings. Now this is my network. It shows my wireless network and password. It also shows my external IP address, the primary Eero IP, so that's the router IP. Shows me I've got an update, which I can uh, you know, check and go. And then down below, I've got advanced settings. So let's tap on that, because this is where we're able to do some of the things that you're used to doing with your router applications. So I've got internet connection. If I tap on that, it's going to give me either a default with my ISP, what they're giving me with subnet and router, or I can tap and uh, set up a static IP if I've got a static IP address. Uh, I don't, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Let me just tap back. I can also set up DNS. And so in here, you see that I've got uh, the ISP's DNS. If I want to do a custom, if I tap on custom, then I can set a primary and a secondary DNS in here if I want to do that. And so this is where, for those of you who do an OS 10 server, you would put in your server as the primary, and then you put a secondary in there, like maybe OpenDNS or Google's 8.8.8.8 .8 or something like that. Uh, I'm just going to leave it on the default for now because I'll set that in a minute. I've got DHCP and NAT in here, and I can set this up as just automatic, or I can set it a manual IP for that, uh, or I can set it in bridge mode. So if you wanted to use your existing router, uh, maybe you want to use your Apple router, let's say, and then have these Eros extend your network, you can set them in bridge mode. Uh, you'll lose some of the functionality uh, that you get in the application by doing that, but it's certainly uh, an option to be able to do it that way. Let me tap back again. Uh, I can also do reservations in port forwarding. And so if I just tap on this, I can add a particular reservation. So let's just click on that. And let's say I want to add a reservation for my server because I had set that up before. You can see I've got an IP address here, and I want to change that IP address. So I'm going to back this out right here, and I'll go, uh, let's say, 10.0.1.3 because that's what I have set up uh, normally for it. And then I can do all of my port forwarding in here as well, where I open particular ports. If I just tap on this, i got to save that reservation. And now uh, we couldn't update the settings. Look like the address you're entered is outside your subnet range. Okay, so it won't save it because I need to put in a different uh, IP. I've got to do it in the subnet of uh, the 1.92 subnet. So I can go in there and set that for the server, but that's where I would set my server's IP address and have all of that uh, function the way I want to. So I can just go into the server app and fix it that way. I can also open particular ports for particular devices. And so, for instance, again, if I come back in here for server, just leave that alone, say open port. Save it. And now it takes me in here where I can put in my port information. So I put in the name, I put in the external port, the internal port, and then I can say whether it's on TCP and UDP or only TCP or only UDP. And I can set those up that way. And then just add the different ports into the router. I'm just going to delete this reservation because uh, I didn't do anything there. And we'll tap all the way back. Now, I also have UPnP as well, and this is the universal plug-and-play uh, that happens for game consoles and those sorts of things. So you can slide that on or off. And then I can also delete my network down below if I wanted to do that. So let me just pop back out here and come back out to my network. So that gives you an idea of how to use the Eero application. Like I said, I've just, uh, just gotten this. I'm playing with it a little bit, and uh, I will... I'll definitely be doing some work on it to see how well it works with uh, the Mac OS server and setting up those different IP reservations and such. And, um, and then I'll show you if it works, and I'll let you know if I have any issues with it. But so far, the speed's been really good throughout my entire house, where it's been pretty consistent uh, in every location, which is great, because down by my family room where I've got the television, that's where I'd have the lowest signal. Uh, and it's not in a place where I can run cable. So I needed a wireless solution that would improve it. So I'll keep testing it, and I'll let you know what happens. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.